Hey, I'm Kaya, and I'm a little nervous about Todd McFarlane writing and directing the new Spawn movie. I'm still traumatized from the last time a legendary comic artist got behind a camera. I am sorely disappointed. But McFarlane might be different. Throughout his whole career, he's been an advocate for creators' rights to their own work. It's what led him and other artists to found Image Comics in the 90s. But his insistence on control has kept the new Spawn film in development hell for nearly a decade. Now that it's finally got the green light, I can't blame the guy for wanting to handle things himself. Let's run down the long road to the reboot and see how it's just another example of Todd McFarlane's independent spirit. Spirit, ghost. Spawn, it all makes sense. We're back with the puns, great. Any story about McFarlane has to start with Image Comics. Today, most people know Image as the home of indie darlings like Saga, Bitch Planet, and The Walking Dead. But when it started, the content wasn't that different from what the big guys were putting out. That's because Image was founded by some of Marvel and DC's most popular artists. McFarlane had only been a professional for a few years when his work on The Amazing Spider-Man made him a megastar. Soon he was drawing and writing his very own Spidey book, but it wasn't enough. Under Marvel's contract, he didn't own any characters he created, and he only got small royalties for his extremely profitable work. So with a few other superstar artists, he left to form his own company called Image Comics. Image's creator first philosophy meant the company wouldn't own any intellectual property except for its name and logo. And if the system gets changed even a little bit, and uh, some of the rules get changed, and, and, and it makes it a little bit better for the 12-year-old kids coming up, then we've accomplished what we wanted. The creators kept all the rights to their books instead. Jim Lee's Wildcats, Eric Larson's Savage Dragon, Rob Liefeld's Youngblood, and the star of the show, Todd McFarlane's Spawn. The angsty comic about a murdered CIA assassin turned demonic soldier was a massive hit, and Columbia Pictures was in talk to make a Spawn movie as early as 1992. The studio promised serious money and A-list stars, but all McFarlane wanted was control. He didn't want to compromise his dark vision for the character, but he sure as hell didn't want to see Spawn Happy Meal toys. Though that would have been sick. I mean, like imagine like a kid reaching in for a nugget and pulling out like a tiny Spawn and getting the shit scared out of them. I just like the idea of children in fear. <laughs> Instead, he sold the rights to New Line Cinema for $1 in exchange for creative input and control of the merchandising. What? That's the sweetest plum! Unfortunately, one thing was non-negotiable. The dark, ultra-violent, satanic superhero movie had to be PG-13. That makes no sense. The movie's rated PG-13. It might have some material in there that mommy and daddy might not like uh, some of the young kids to see, so Jody might just have to stay home. Bye-bye, Jody. Other than that, it's actually pretty faithful to the story. One of the biggest differences is actually a result of Image's creator-owned philosophy. In the comics, Spawn was originally murdered by a guy named Chapel, but he was created by Rob Liefeld, who left Image back in 96. So in the movie, a new character named Jessica Priest kills Al Simmons instead. Wanda! New Line also demanded a change to Terry Fitzgerald, Simmons' best friend who married his widow, which is f***ed up. They turned him into a white guy for the movie, which is even more f***ed up. See, Spawn was the first comic book adaptation to star a black superhero in the leading role. It beat Steel to theaters by two weeks and Blade by a year. But apparently, the studio thought having too many African-American actors would pigeonhole it as a black film. Guess they had a point. I mean, who would ever pay money to see a big budget action movie with two black leads? Anyway, the movie isn't that bad, even if it's really hurt by the PG-13 rating and atrocious special effects. I mean, hell looks like a screensaver. I love it, but like, Jesus Christ, man. Malboja looks like a hairless cat with gray pubes glued to his scalp. And Spawn's cape is barely on screen because it costs too much to make and it basically looks like a f***ing fruit roll up anyway. Like seriously, Diablo 1 had better cut scenes than this $50 million movie. <laughs> Maybe like they spent most of the money on the cast. Like Michael J. White kills it as Spawn, but I still only see him as Black Dynamite. Not all night. Not all night. Or like more importantly, the dude from the pencil trick in The Dark Knight. Cool. Joker. Great. And Martin Sheen is clearly having fun as the over-the-top villain. But the real standout is the Violator. That clown is literally the best thing I've ever seen and started my obsession with clowns and horror films or like basically anything scary ever because he's just so good and campy. <laughs> Pretty soon you're gonna get here in funny places and you're gonna start thinking about girls, huh? Also, it made me think like John Leguizamo is actually way shorter than he actually is. Like between Spawn and Moulin Rouge, can we get like a height check here? Like, cause Google says he's five foot eight and I don't buy it. Anyways, moving on. Maybe live action isn't the best median for Spawn. I know I always preferred Spawn the animated series. <laughs> what the hell are you? 
today, Todd McFarlane is no stranger to animation. His studio made music videos for Pearl Jam, Disturb, and even won a Grammy for Korn's Freak on a Leash. But when HBO approached him to launch their new animation block with Spawn, he didn't have any experience. So he recruited from the best TV animation had to offer, Batman the Animated Series. Which is dope. Like, I love Batman the Animated Series. Like, it's my favorite, like, thing ever. Like, I'm sorry, but I get really excited about Batman, and this is one of the best animated series for him. Okay, so basically Todd poached some people, like composer Shirley Walker and Eric Wendomsky, the animator who draped Gotham in shadows and painted all those awesome title cards for every episode. The result was a gorgeous adaptation of the comic. It was dark and bloody and violent in ways the PG-13 movie just yes. couldn't be. Sweet, tasty Wanda. Keith David is perfection in the starring role. Who am I? I don't know. That's right, you don't know. Let that little mystery keep you up at night. Seriously, I let this man read me classified ads. And while the animation is kind of inconsistent, when it works, it's super impressive, especially after the anime studio Madhouse took over for the second season. That's the same people who made Death Note, which is also amazing. But once again, executive meddling reared its ugly head. No, no, he was supposed to have attitude. Um. What, what do you mean exactly? HBO didn't like the script for season two, so they ordered rewrites. They didn't have time or money for reshoots, so they dubbed new lines of dialogue over the existing shots and used shadows to cover up the lip sync. By 1999, HBO had basically thrown in the towel on their animation division. They stopped giving a shit about Spawn even after it won an Emmy. So season three was a dud and the show was canceled soon after. Since then, things have been pretty quiet on the Spawn front. The comic is still going strong and there's been a bunch of games and a ton of incredible toys. But for the last 10 years, McFarlane has been trying to bring back Spawn to the screen on his own terms. He just keeps running into reboot troubles. McFarlane announced two new Spawn projects, a new animated series and a reboot of the movie. Spawn the Animation actually entered pre-production for a while. The voice work is all recorded with a pretty awesome cast too. There's Mark Hamill, Clancy Brown, and Keith David back as Spawn. But between legal issues and the search for the right animation studios, I don't know if we're ever gonna get that off the shelf. McFarlane's been talking about writing and directing a new movie for just as long. The official news is, script is done, right? At least the first rough draft. When he couldn't find producers who would play ball. But now that Get Out and Purge producer Bloomhouse is on board, he shouldn't have any problem getting that R rating. I think Todd is gonna fit great into, uh, into the Blumhouse fold and we're gonna open up a lane for him and let, it do, let him do his thing. And McFarlane's plan for a smaller, cheaper horror film in the vein of Jaws makes perfect sense for a first time director. <laughs> Honestly, good for him for sticking to his guns. If there's one constant in Todd McFarlane's career, it's his commitment to keeping art in the hands of the creators. So best of luck, Todd. It's not like you could do any worse than Frank Miller. You were right. We're mistakes. We never should have happened. It's been 20 years in the making, but it looks like the new Spawn movie is in exactly the right hands. Hi, I'm Kaya, and I love talking about Spawn. It's one of my favorite movies, and like animated shows are both great. I also love The Violator like a lot, so let me know who your favorite scary clown is, and like, comment, and share. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>